All right, we're back. So our heroes are in Galopolis, where they've come in search of the supposed branch of Yggdrasil that they hope will help them reach the World Tree. The Slayer of the Sand has been spotted, and Tunks finds himself help helping the hapless Prince Ferris once again. As he's sent to Wait, we already did this. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, Prince Ferris once again as he's sent out into the Celestial Stands to ensnare it. With Sylvando's enthusiastic assistance, they manage to capture the creature and get it back to Galopolis. But it promptly breaks free of its change and goes berserk. And it's not taking my controller? Okay. There we go. Sylvando suddenly appears again, and with a few choice words, whips Ferris into a frenzy. The prince stands firm, and while it takes Sylv to strike the killing blow, his swift exit leaves the future Sultan free to soak up all the glory. Having finally learned his lesson, Ferris comes clean to his father. He also raises the topic of the rainbow, and the party's relief turns to incredulity as the Sultan reveals as he sold it to a traveling salesman to pay for the Sand National. The party leave Galopolis in search... Oh, in pursuit of the salesman and are accosted by Sylvando on their way out of the gate, unable to bear the thought of the Dark One of bringing despair to all and sundry. He insists on joining Tunks and his pals on their quest. With his new addition to their merry band in tow, they take off for Gondolia, where it seems Sylv has a ship they can use. You know, I'm a little bit disappointed that Galopolis was not more horse-focused. Like... I feel like they really should have, like, played it up like crazy. Whoa. That was some frame rate. Oh. Okay, so I actually have, apparently... What's the button? I have a side quest over here. That I missed? I'm not actually sure, but somebody said there was a soldier or something. Let's talk to this guy, see if we're done with the quest or not. Nope. So he's already said that. Somebody said there was another quest, like, outside the... Maybe it's this guy? No. Maybe it's in here? I'll have to go looking, but apparently there's stuff that I missed somewhere. Not in here, though. I don't know, I'll have to go read the comments. Because I don't like missing stuff, but it, uh... Oh well. It's not the end of the world. Let's see. Man, I am... I'm not going to say out of sorts, but, uh... I am... I'm just mildly... I was playing RimWorld right before this, and... I don't think I can, like, really communicate just how much that game just, like... Frazzles me? It's a great game... Okay, I'm leaving. That's a weird person. Uh... Like... There's just so much going on, and because of the random events, it's just like... To everything is totally unpredictable and maddening. Mildly mildly maddening at all times. And I like I like it. I like the idea of uh, of playing it, but boy, does like playing that and Factorio back to back, I just by the end of it I'm like, I have no train of thought. I'm just I am just hoping I'm holding on, hoping that I can like get get through this. It's a weird feeling. I don't like it. Okay, the Pernicious Peninsula. Huh. We never actually did go up go up there. Not that it matters. But yeah, let's let's go get that side quest. Apparently outside the gate. I'm gonna fight a thing. Just get my head on straight. Or not. Whoa! That's a lot of dudes. Well, not really a big deal. Oh. Oh right. I forgot. I set her to manual control. I should probably switch her away from manual control. She plays stupid, but for anything anything less than a boss fight probably doesn't actually require me to control both of them. Don't worry, I'm here to help. I forgot we're still injured. Probably should have stopped at a uh, in. Not that we really need to worry about it too much. So. I'm looking at this now, and I'm, I'm reminded of uh, when I was a kid. Obviously, used to play a lot of Dragon Quest, Wonderful. and it was always, it was always really fun. Obviously, uh, but the thing it always it always drove me a little bit nutters with uh, oh, accelerate. Uh, that's neat. It always drove me a little bit nutters because you never got your MP back, and that was a that was like a serious issue for me. Uh, I never liked how how limited you are with MP, and even MP items were pretty, like, rare. 
Uh, can I do tactics? Veronica's. Uh... Okay, there we go. But it always bothered it, it always bothered me a ton because it's like I, I pretty much never used spells. I saved them for like healing and nothing else. I almost never did offensive spells because you never knew when you were gonna get MP back except for when you leveled up. Maybe. Oh right, we got bang now. Cool. Uh But so I I don't remember what the first chair PG that did this was, but effectively you'd recover MP by just walking around or something something to that degree and I really wish I remember what that JRPG was I don't think it was one that I owned I think it was one that like a friend had and I was just playing at his house or something but you know playing that I was so I was so just like oh Who my god this some? is the best JRPG <laughs> ever purely because I didn't have to wait for that MP to come back and you know I could reasonably use magic I think to a lesser degree uh I really enjoyed, like, Final Fantasy tactics for that, because, you know, the battles were instanced, and you never really had to run it, worry about running out of juice. Uh, I think, actually, most of the Final Fantasy games don't really have that problem. I... I want to say I had that problem in Final Fantasy 6 and 7. 8 was bizarre. I don't think I really enjoyed 8 that much. Because... I don't know how many of you guys have played Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, it seems like it's kind of a quiet night in chat. So I doubt I'm going to get a whole lot of people chiming in on this one. But uh, Final Fantasy VIII had this like very strange draw system. Where effectively, nobody learned spells. You just like stole them from enemies and stuff. And so you had to actually farm them for, re for magic as like a weird resource. Which is fascinating, but also like infuriating. Because it made it really, really hard to, uh, to, like, keep a, a standard stock, and you had to spend, like, an inordinate amount of time just farming to get enough spells. It's very strange. Oh well. Greetings, Traveler. My name is Hakim. Please pardon my impertinence, but I assume you're making the journey to Gondolia? If so, I have a favor I'd like to ask you. I have a sister, you see. Her name is Akia. <laughs> she works in a bakery in the city. It seems she's been very busy of late and has been unable to come home and visit as a result. As such, I've written her a letter. Unfortunately, I'm not permitted to leave my post. Would you be so good as to deliver the letter to Akia on my behalf? Okay. You will. Oh, praise the sands. Only one with a truly kind heart would agree to assist a, stra assist a stranger in this manner. Here's the letter. I'd like you to deliver the letter. I do not need to tell you this, of course. But it's got conten uh, contents are very important. Do not lose it. Akia works in a bakery in the northwestern part of Gondolia. I'd be most grateful if you deliver the letter to her there. Not just that, spells and how many of that spell you had was equipped like a piece of armor. Oh man, I didn't even know about that. Alright, anyway. Uh, I didn't even know- I don't even remember the, uh, the equipping spell system. I just remembered- uh, finding, like, Kiraga at one point and drawing 99 of it, just so I wouldn't have to worry about it. And nothing beats how weird the jump was for Final Fantasy XIII, where you got completely healed after every battle. It battles the weird puzzle and nothing more. I never played Final Fantasy XIII. I think I loaded it up, watched a couple of cutscenes, and then, like, did nothing for it, or never continued it, because it wasn't... I don't think I was doing it for YouTube at the time, though I think I had started YouTube. I, like, consider doing it as, like, a, I'd record, uh, I'd record it preemptively and then, like, blitz through the, uh, you know, kind of speed the battles up. I didn't end up doing that because massive, massive, I mean, that would effectively require playing through Final Fantasy XIII twice, which does not sound very fun. Um... I've always wanted to, just to see why why everybody, like, hates it so much. But I don't think I can bring myself to play, effectively, three different JRPGs. Because you wouldn't just play Final Fantasy XIII, because most people tell me to play Final Fantasy XIII 2, which is apparently the best one. And, like, has monster collection mechanics and some other things. Let's heat things up. I think Final Fantasy XII was my favorite. I liked... I like 10 too, just because of the uh, the interesting class mechanics. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see, abilities. Oh, I have Metal Slash. Nope. That's... I was really hoping Metal Slash would actually work against him. It does one damage. Thank. Real help. I mean, at least he's weak to magic, so it's not actually that big of a deal. Who else you know, wants it's, some? It's wild how much Final Fantasy games started to vary once they hit 3D. Because, like, none of them were similar. I mean, obviously, 11 and 14 are kind of uh, anomalous in and of themselves, because obviously they're not, uh, you know, they don't... Well, they're MMOs. Uh, but, like, Final Fantasy 15 was a bizarre action game. Uh, Final Fantasy 7... Honestly, 7 was still pretty traditional. 8 was fairly... Eight, 7, 8, and 9 were traditional, but with minor variations. I guess. And, and then, like, you started back. getting into 10. 10, 12, 13, and 15 are shockingly different. But then again, like, it took a while between each game. Like, 10 came out in, like, what, the year 2000? 2001? And then... 10 2 came out, like, a little ways after. I don't, I don't really remember that one. Uh... And then 12 was, like, still on the PS2, so still similar era. And then 13 was, like... PS3, but it was like six, eight years later, or something ridiculous like that. I really wish you could turn off uh, battle voices. I'm sorry that you guys hear Veronica screaming. We could always just replace Veronica with Sylvando. You know, that's actually not a bad idea. If it bothers you guys too much, I can I can switch it away. We might have to listen to Sylvando. Uh, actually, yeah, why don't we do that? Miscellaneous lineup. Sylvando. Let's bring him along instead. And then get him a whip at some point. So at least it won't be super high-pitched. Yeah, she's just so shrill. I know! I So, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 had this lovely mechanic where you can set the battle voice as a, uh, as a separate slider. This game doesn't have that, so for me, I've turned up the voices so that, uh, you know, cutscenes are the right volume. Battles, unfortunately, are not, because effectively the, the voices are are still cutscene volume. And it's it's dumb. That's, that's one of those things that, like, I really hope developers uh, start adding as just a standard thing. It's kind of like how we didn't have FOV sliders for ages, but then again, I don't think most developers even think about this as, like, a an option, or even a necessity. That's a weird portrait for Sylvando, by the way. He looks, like, weirdly smug, almost villainously so. But yeah, I might as well give Sylvando the light of day, Did see what his moves are. Right? He might not actually be a bad character, anyway. Especially if I give him a whip for, uh, more consistent, uh... For more consistent, uh, AoE. Okay, what's the map? Oh, boy. Well, we want to stop by every camp that we, we go by. Camp type. <laughs> yeah, real helpful. Oh! Actually helpful. What the heck is this? Can I... Okay, so I can't talk to him here. Nor do I care that much. We might as well rest until dawn. Okay, what's up with you? Why are you here? My bow this is. Many like it, uh, many like it there are, but mine, this one is. My best friend my bow is. My life it is, master it I must. And you are, hmm, the master speaks not of one such as you, but perhaps you might like to participate, hmm? Should you wish to uh, take part in the crossbow challenge, the master must uh, must you seek. In Galapagos City he waits. Find him you must. Speak with him you must. Radio then. So apparently there's like some crossbow master dude in Galapagos. I'll go back there later. 
and Yoda. Yeah, they intentionally make them speak like Yoda. I mean, they're small green men. Either... Either they hang out with Mr. Popo or they speak like that. I don't think there's a middle ground for small green men. Oh, except for, except for potentially kidnapping cows. Oh, everybody's pepped up. What do we got? Oh, uh, ability is flame slash. You know what? We might actually want to. Uh, we might want to warp back into the desert if people are still we pepped did up. It, darlings. Okay, they're still pepped up. So we actually want to zoom to north of Galopolis. So we have to use the wild side uh, pep power against one of those um, one of those big like chimera looking suckers. Okay, they're they're still set up for it. There they are. And this is like probably my best opportunity to do so. I really like their design. Mon the monster design is uh, actually kind of incredible with this game. But the big monsters definitely take the cake. Small ones, uh, well, small ones. Anyway, wild side. I like the fact that he's gone berserk and will now throw boomerangs at, an, at a more aggressive pace. Oh, now he wakes up. But yeah, look at how cool that thing is. Like, I... I actually really wish more of the monsters looked like that. Ow! That hurt. Because, like, I, I think I had the same experience when I was playing Nino Kuni 2. There we go. You unleash your wild side and slew splits, uh, spits fire. You should go and tell the painter in front of the notice board in northern, northern Galopolis. And that we shall do. Uh, let's start by... Let's heal self. Okay, and then we... Then we zoom. To actual Galopolis. <coughs> I don't actually remember if he had anything immediately useful, but that's okay. Um... But yeah, that Spitzfire looks awesome, and like, I would love to play uh, a game where all of the monsters look like look like that. Obviously, like, the smaller monsters in this game look a little doofier, and some of the big ones are going to look real cool. Um, but like, oh man, Dragon Warrior Monsters? Like, imagine playing a Dragon Warrior Monsters game that looked like... looked like that. Ooh, I'd be happy. I saw it all, every single moment. Even from this distance, I could sense the glorious intensity of the battle. I have quite the telescope, apparently. Holy crap. And do you know, inspiration for the title of my masterpiece has already, piece has already stuck, struck. It shall be called A Walk on the Wild Side. I'm an unoriginal hack. But now is not the time to be thinking of titles. I must devote all my energies to completing the work itself. Ah, but before I forget, I must give you something to thank you for your assistance, please. So we have Furry Finery. Okay, so we can make fur hoods, fur ponchos. Truly, it's been years since I witnessed such a stimulating scene. These are the moments an artist lives for. A thousand thank yous, young man. Okay, well, anyway, now that, now that we're done uh, with that, let's go back to, was it, yeah, all the way out here. I have not been drinking enough water lately. I don't know why, I just haven't been thirsty and it kind of sucks. Cause like I look at my water bottle, I'm like, I should drink some of that. And I'm like, nope, not interested. Maybe I'll make smoothies after the stream. That would be a good idea. And then Wander was a furry. Oh no! I, it's <laughs> story time-ish. Not really story time, but when I was, uh, when I was just getting started with art, I had no concept of what furries or even anthropomorphic anythings were. Uh, but I started doing art right in the height of, uh, of the Sonic OC craze. Uh, I think it was right before Sonic 06 came out. So back when Sonic was, like, 
vaguely acceptable. Um, and so, you know, I was like, hey, you know, I, I like these things. Uh, I'm a big fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. But does his eyes follow me? Oh, boy. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's strange. <laughs> I'm on fire! Oh, that's great. Let's see, am I gonna make smoothies for all of you? No. Score I only have enough juice for, like, uh, some smoothies. Oh. Bonus enemy? Bonus enemy. Let's fight this guy. Did you make a Sonic OC do not steal? I think it was, like, a cat thing. It wasn't even, like... It wasn't that egregious or whatever, but, you know, it clearly uh, was one of those situations where I had I had no idea uh, what I was... I'm not even going to say getting myself into, but so I think I drew it like twice. And then, um, then I was like, all right, time to go draw other things. And so I got like really big into uh, anime dudes with... Uh, this is like 15-year-old me or something like that. So like probably should have known a little bit better. But yeah, I was really big into drawing anime dudes with robot arms. And then World Ends With You came out, and I got really into pretty much anything associated with World Ends With You. Which I'm really excited for uh, the new one coming out. Or new one, the, the final remaster, whatever you want to call it. Because uh, that actually has co-op, so Shell and I could do that. Hopefully I can record it. If I can't record it, well, no. Yeah, it should be able to be controlled by like Victory. one person on the controller. Or two people on the controller. You can now ride the Hork Knight. Oh. I can ride the bee. That's what's going on. And we immediately get into battle. Well, that's fine. Wait. Are they extra huge? No, they're not extra huge. The way the camera was zoomed in, I was like, are they just going to be, like, extra large? Because that worries me. <laughs> the fact that their eyes follow me is unsettling. But, uh, yeah, so I, I got into, like, anime stuff pretty hard after that. Uh, because the world ends with you and a couple other things. We did it, darlings! They got... Alright. I can... Oh! Oh, I can jump. I can jump across like this. That's cool! I can effectively... Actually, I have no idea if you could traverse this normally. But we can get out here, which is kind of neat. Um, well, let's see. Brain brain is distracted by things. But yeah, so I, I, I got kind of into it, but it wasn't like that bad. And by the time I hit uh, college, I was like, oh yeah, this is not, this is not what you, uh, this is not actually what like any pro would do. I got really into Braid. Effectively, I follow trends uh, real hard. I'm like, hey, this is something I like. Let's make art art of it. And so I got like really big into braid and video games and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I want to be a, a game artist. And so I started doing stuff like that. And that definitely, definitely informed my style a little bit more. Can't continue this way while mounted. Well, this was short-lived. I t totally loved uh, World Ends With You too. Which the mobile port would control as smoothly as the DS original does. I'm hoping the Switch, uh, the Switch port is good. Because the idea of playing uh, World Ends With... The World Ends With You co-op with Shell would be nice. And if it controls well, I would be very happy. And if it doesn't, oh well. Oh yeah, Weather Cow. Raining here at dawn tomorrow. Watch your step, it could get slip slippery under hoof. Moo. That is a weird, that is weird. Weather cows, sure, why not? Can I? Okay, so it doesn't look like I can go through the water, like, uh, but if I had the bee mount, I could. Gotcha. Uh, Wander followed trends all the way to Let's Plays. That I did! I, I started Let's Playing because I wanted, uh, I wanted to play games with, uh, with people. Because I didn't really have a lot of people to play video games with in college. Uh, I kind of did, but they weren't very consistent or they didn't like what I liked. So I was just like, I don't know, let's, uh, let's start Let's Playing, see if I can make, make some friends. And I did. And it, uh, then became my job, so that makes life a little easier.
Okay. Says. Okay. But, uh. Yeah, so my. What? Oh! I forgot! I can shoot people with a cross, crossbow if I pull the left trigger. That is. Is that a tiger that ate a man, or a man that hollowed out a tiger and wears its skin as a suit? Or is that a tiger with a serious dental problem? I don't know, but I wouldn't buy cereal from him. But yeah, so I I got kind of I kind of escaped from the uh, from the idea of like Sonic OCs and like OCs in general pretty quick. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I had uh, I had a friend that was very big into his OC, his singular OC, and would only draw said OC over and over and over again. And so I was just like. Eh. Whenever he'd start like bragging about it or like talking about everything, and I'm just Victory. like, man, I uh, I have like the I had an idea for a couple of maybe OCs, but like this just feels like too much. I started drawing porn, and I was like, well, all right, I don't. You I you pretend your OC is yourself. I want I don't want it. I don't want it at all. Oh, those those were weird. That was a weird. That was a bad weird. It's always, it's always uncomfortable when you have an art friend that descends into drawing porn publicly, uh, without like making a side account or whatever. I'm totally fine with like uh, artists making like uh, separate accounts for NSFW stuff, or like marking it separately. Uh, but one of the reasons why I never really got into Tumblr was because I made a bunch of art friends uh, online and elsewhere, and you know just some people. And, like, one or two of them, uh, would just, like, overnight almost just unabashedly started drawing, uh, not safe for work stuff. And so, like, one day I was just scrolling through my feed and I just saw, like, you know, massive schlong. And I was like, whoa, hi, hello. Hmm. And pretty much after that I was just like, this site is, uh, inherently problem. I don't mind so much. Because I'm older and, you know, I guess desensitized. Uh, but uh, it definitely kind of informs your opinions on people when you start uh, seeing what they're into. Score art friends can be uncomfortable guys. to explain when they're uh, po uh, porny art friends. Yep. Pretty much anybody that would really get into things. I had one friend who, who got into a lot of not safe for work stuff. And then Homestuck? And so at first, like, the stuff that she was putting out uh, was actually safe for work again. I was like, oh, this is nice, you know, I can follow you again. You know, because at that point, that was like the early days of Homestuck before I think all the stigma started rolling in. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I wouldn't mind. And then it started, then the stigma started happening and, you know, of course, uh, went from, uh, you know, regular ho Homestuck stuff to uh, horny stuck. I hate myself. Uh, and it was, it was bad again, and I was just like, I give up, I, I give up trying to have art friends. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have, like, I'm just gonna live in my, oh, we love iron armor. We know how to make iron helmets, cuirasses, and iron armor. Neat. But yeah, that was kind of the point where I wrote off the internet as a whole for art. Now I just follow people on Twitter, but like, very specific people really wander. Hey, I, I gotta make atrocious puns when I can. I don't get a whole lot of chances. I'm not much of a, uh, I'm not, mu I'm not very punny. I do other things. I'm more of like a, a gag humor. But yeah. So now, as far as artists go, I follow, like, game developer artists, because you know they don't draw not safe for work stuff, because you know, they're representing their company. Like, you're not gonna see, uh, who's a, who's a good example of an artist that I follow? Uh, I guess, you won't see, uh, Joachim Sandberg, I think that's his name, uh, the, the guy that made Iconoclast. You're not gonna see him putting out a whole lot of not safe for work stuff, especially for his, his own games. Uh, I think he actually has, but it, they're fairly tasteful. Nothing like, you know, stuff that would make me think less of him. Uh, 
or like you know some artist that works at uh, you know Blizzard for example generally you're gonna see only safe work stuff because they don't really want that to reflect badly on the on the uh, on the company and stuff and so that's that's fine the problem is that actually leads to a kind of unfortunate problem I think this has just been the internet as a whole uh, but Victory, because of the uh, political situation darling. in the world, a lot of people are, are very vocal about it now. And I'm like, I mean, I don't mind too much, but I followed you for your game opinions. And then, like, hearing, seeing two developers that I like, uh, more or less yelling at each other publicly on the internet, uh, over, like, political views, is like, eh, eh. I didn't really enjoy that so much. But I just unfollowed them, because they would not stop either. I'm a bad citizen of the I'm world. On fire! Is that his only move? Just burp fire at people? Probably is. Hey, mini battle. Hope we actually find out how to use them at some point. And should be soon. Where where tiger? Oh okay, that is weird. I did it. I shot the target. What is the point of that? Unless there's multiple targets throughout this entire area that I should be shooting at. Oh no. Now I have to look. Just in case there are more. Let's see, I just thought about devs putting out not safe for work fan games or their own games under pseudonyms. Uh, some mangakas do doujin work of their own works. Yeah, like uh, the fairy tale guy. Except for that's not even doujin, he's just drawing like not safe for work stuff. Because he can and no one's stopping him. I... I don't know. I'm shocked they have the time to do that sort of thing. But I guess, I guess the not safe for work stuff probably sells real well. In some cases probably sells better than the uh than the actual man manga. I always have to catch myself. I, for years I called it manga. And I'm fairly certain it's manga. And it's like, it's been a lifetime of me trying to get away from the wrong we pronunciation. It, Not actually a big deal, but it's just like, nope, nope, no wonder. You don't, don't say it wrong. You know you can do it. And then I still intentionally... Well, not intentionally. I still accidentally flub it anyway. One of the Dragon Quest Joker, one of the plot twists was the guy in the tiger suit was actually a were-tiger. I think I remember that. I played Joker. I didn't enjoy Joker as much. Oh, hi. Where am I? I thought I was going the other other direction. Probably should have been paying attention. Let's, let's go back for a second. Because there was like a, a little offshoot that I should look at. I actually have no idea. Let's go the other way. What is over here? I have no idea. All who intend to enter the Grotta de la Font, we the members of the Gondolian Chamber of Commerce recommend that you stock up on supplies and take a well-deserved rest in our beautiful city first. Well, there's our answer. Go back this way. Yeah, I don't know how much, like, side exploration this game really involves. Probably once we get further in, maybe there's some, like, endgame dungeons or whatever. I don't know. I've seen some people way further than I am. Unfortunately, this is one of those games where it came out while I was still on vacation. Uh, so I never actually got the chance to, to really, like, binge a whole lot of it. I should probably just, like, pick a day and be like, I'm just gonna play Dragon Quest today. Viewership be damned. 